Will the new Congress be bipartisan? Google settles a massive location tracking lawsuit. And Donald Trump announces his 2024 presidential campaign. And more on this week's headlines. Welcome to America Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by Mova Globes. These are really amazing globes that spin on their own without cords or batteries. And whether you get this blue and gold model or one of their other great world map designs, you can appreciate the beauty of our planet. So, Amazon founder Jeff Bezos said he plans to give most of his $124 billion net worth to charity. Wow, how incredibly generous. Is definitely not the reaction from the hundreds of thousands of Amazon factory workers making just above minimum wage reading this news during their bathroom break. I'm just kidding. Amazon factory workers don't get bathroom breaks. Bezos wasn't specific on how much he would donate or a timeline for when he would donate it. This is also the first time he made such a pledge, despite having been a billionaire since taking Amazon public in 1998. And I'm sure it's completely coincidental he made this pledge on the same day that Amazon announced they would be laying off 10,000 employees just before the holidays. How charitable. The employee's cut will come from the corporate and tech sector, including workers tasked with running Alexa. So don't be surprised the next time you ask Alexa what the temperature is, and she replies, colder than the ball of ice Jeff Bezos calls his heart. Speaking of frigid monsters, Congress. After last week's midterm elections, which votes are still being counted for somehow, Democrats maintained control of the Senate, and Republicans took the House by a slim majority. Coincidentally, slim majority is my rap name. So how will this new, ever so slight shift in power change the dynamics? Nancy Pelosi announced she won't seek re-election for a Democratic leadership role, and Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer is optimistic this new Congress will be more bipartisan. Yeah, because when my rivals get leverage over me, the first thing I assume is now that they have the upper hand, I can finally convince them to see things my way. That makes about as much sense as literally every single person Pete Davidson has dated. Seriously, does he have like a magic lamp or something? Schumer said Republicans will be more willing to compromise because it's different this time because they lost. They all expected to win. The red wave proved to be a red mirage. Because if anyone's known to be gracious losers, it's politicians. But not everyone is so blindly optimistic about this new Congress. Take President Biden. During a press conference at the G20 summit, he said he doesn't believe Democrats have enough votes to codify abortion rights into law. But Mr. President, what should Americans expect from Congress as it relates to abortion rights after the midterms? I don't think they can expect much of anything other than we're going to maintain our positions. I'm not going to get into more questions. I shouldn't even answer your question. Did he just say you shouldn't expect much from him and then immediately regret saying something he shouldn't have? Wow. Joe Biden continues to be the most relatable president of all time. Except for maybe William Howard Taft, because who among us hasn't gotten stuck in a bathtub, am I right? Biden's non-commitment to codifying abortion into law, despite his earlier promise to do so, is likely disappointing for abortion rights advocates. To them, I say, don't be sad about this. After all, the Democrats had dozens of chances to codify abortion rights into law over the last several decades before Roe v. Wade was overturned, but they decided not to. So they'd always have that carrot to dangle in every election. So the odds they actually would have codified it into law, even if they won both the House and Senate, in a landslide are practically zero. There. Don't you feel better already? But bipartisan work is being done in the current Congress. A bipartisan group of senators announced they reached a deal on a bill that would codify same-sex marriage into law. This bill, called the Respect for Marriage Act, would also codify interracial marriage into law. 
Now, it wouldn't require every state to perform same-sex marriage should the Supreme Court overturn 2015 Obergefell v. Hodges' decision that made it legal. But it would require states to recognize legal marriages from other states. In a statement, the authors of the bill said, through bipartisan collaboration, we've crafted common sense language to confirm that this legislation fully respects and protects Americans' religious liberties and diverse beliefs, while leaving intact the core mission of the legislation to protect marriage equality. Twelve Republican senators voted to break a filibuster on this bill, so it will at some point in the near future be brought forward for debate and a vote. If this bill becomes law, then I'd like to be the first to congratulate Bert and Ernie for finally being able to get engaged. It's a shame not everyone will be able to attend their long overdue wedding, since the count will probably still be busy counting ballots from all these inexplicably still contested midterm elections. So that's why it's taking so long. 9,004,692. Ah, ah, ah. More after the break. Welcome back. This week, the world's population officially reached 8 billion people. Wow, over 8 billion people on the planet. That's insane. And even crazier, out of all those 8 billion people, Mark Zuckerberg is the only one who's excited to join the metaverse. But something people were excited to see was the meeting between U.S. President Joe Biden and leader of the Chinese Communist Party Xi Jinping this week at the G20 summit in Bali, Indonesia. This was the first time the leaders have met face to face since Biden took office. Ahead of their meeting, Xi Jinping said, we need to work with all countries to bring more hope to world peace, greater confidence in global stability, and stronger impetus to common development. And I assume Xi Jinping added, the country I most want to bring peace to is Taiwan. Why don't you just leave me alone with them for a little bit? This meeting was said to be tense, with Biden voicing his concerns over China's human rights abuses. But it was also said to be productive, with Beijing being optimistic on China-U.S. relations moving forward. Sure. Biden also said he didn't believe China would invade Taiwan in the immediate future, and there would be no new Cold War. So not outright hostile, but not not hostile. I guess this is more of a room temperature war. If this war was a bowl of porridge, Goldilocks would think it was just right. Unless, of course, she was Taiwanese, then she'd be screaming, don't trust that bear. Speaking of shady authoritarian entities, Google. In 2018, it was reported that Google stored users' location data on their phones even if they chose a privacy setting, requesting Google not to do so. This location tracking is a major breach of privacy and has been used by the police to determine people's whereabouts. Yep, I'm sure that wasn't abused in any way. This week, Google entered into a $392 million settlement with 40 states that were suing them over this. This money won't go to Google users whose privacy was infringed upon. It will go to the state governments who brought the case. Because spying on American citizens? That's their job. While this is the largest privacy settlement in U.S. history, Alphabet, Google's parent company, is worth well over a trillion dollars. So this settlement is less than a tenth of one percent of their net worth. I'm not sure how much of a deterrent that's going to be. Earlier this week, Iran sentenced the first person to death for taking part in protests that have engulfed the nation. These protests have been raging for two months. They were sparked by the death of 22-year-old Masa Amini. She died under mysterious circumstances while in the custody of the morality police. She had been accused by the police of improperly wearing a hijab. This severe sentence is meant to be a warning to all other protesters. And Iran has now sentenced even more people to death. This could be just the beginning as Iran executes more prisoners than any other country except for China. Wow. Their executions make Texas look like Candyland, which, if you didn't know, abolished the death penalty back in 1947. Protesters don't need to worry, though. I mean, it's not like any big tech companies are tracking their every movement, and tyrannical leaders could use that data to find out what they've been doing. And even if tech companies were doing that, I'm sure they would receive a pretty big financial penalty, so large and crippling that they'd never do it again. There. Don't you feel better already? And after the break, the GOP Civil War continues. Welcome back. 
After Republicans' disappointing results in the midterms, some GOP members of Congress are calling for change. Senator Josh Hawley wrote, The old party is dead. Time to bury it. Build something new. First of all, calling it the old Republican Party is just redundant. I'm pretty sure the average age of the people in this picture is somewhere between 80 and Old Testament. But there is an internal power struggle among Republicans. Senate GOP leader Mitch McConnell was challenged for his position by Rick Scott, but ultimately won re-election. Should have known who would have won the race between the tortoise and the no-hair. Meanwhile, Senator Ted Cruz lashed out at McConnell on his podcast, saying, Mitch would rather be leader than have a Republican majority. If there's a Republican who can win who's not going to support Mitch, the truth of the matter is he'd rather the Democrat win. Wow. I can't believe that Ted Cruz has a podcast. You'd think as a U.S. Senator he'd have more important things to do, like fleeing to Cancun again this winter. But I think they're right. The Republican Party does need new blood, someone who can unite instead of dividing them. And there's no better fresh face to lead the Republican Party into the future than Donald Trump. On Tuesday night, Trump announced he will once again run for president in 2024. In order to make America great and glorious again, I am tonight announcing my candidacy for President of the United States. Yep, he wants to make America great again, again. This would have probably been the biggest story of the day if it weren't for the fact that a missile initially believed to be fired by Russia crossed the Ukrainian border and landed in Poland, killing two Polish citizens. Oh man, don't you hate it when you build up a big announcement for months and the potential start of World War III steals all your thunder? After investigating, Poland and NATO said they believe the Soviet-era missile that landed in Poland was fired from Ukrainian forces while defending themselves, and it wasn't an intentional attack. They still put the blame on Russia for the deaths, however. Then Biden chimed in, yeah, and Russia's to blame for America's high gas prices too, right? Right? So the spotlight wasn't entirely on Trump, and not just because of international wars, but also because of the civil war within the GOP. The GOP's wealthiest donors are backing Trump's possible rivals, Ron DeSantis and Glenn Youngkin. And Trump's own former vice president, Mike Pence, said Republicans had better choices. So, for those of you keeping score, a bunch of candidates Trump endorsed for midterms lost. Some Republicans, even if they appreciate what Trump did as president, don't want him to run again. The Democrats are still trying to portray him as a criminal and a traitor, and Trump continues to claim elections are rigged. Yet, he still thinks, now is my time. I wish Slim Majority had even a fraction of that self-confidence. I get where Republicans are coming from, though. I mean, if they want a funny, controversial TV star that a lot of people don't understand the appeal of, and always seems to get in relationships with women way out of his league, they don't need Donald Trump. They could just nominate Pete Davidson. And this episode has been sponsored by Mova Globes. I've talked about Mova Globes before. I love the technology. It spins automatically powered by ambient sunlight. When you pick it up, it keeps spinning. And then when you put it back on its base, it corrects its motion. Now Mova has dozens of other cool designs too. And they're made in Taiwan not China. And from now until Christmas, Mova Globes is offering their biggest sale of the year. Apply our special code America Uncovered at checkout for extra savings. So click the link in the description below and pick your favorite version. And when you buy a Mova Globe, you'll be supporting your favorite show about America. So click below to check out Mova Globes and use the code America Uncovered. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.